What's up guys? Today, we're making a slider for under $10. Well, let's just get into it. All right, so let's first get into the things you will need. Screwdriver, uh, preferably a Phillips head. Uh, you're going to need a PVC cutter um, or a saw or razor blade something sharp to cut PVC with. A drill with some drill bits, that's kind of it. Now let's get into what you're going to need uh, piecewise for the actual parts of the slider. All right, so these are the things you're going to need. I will explain them one by one real quick. The first one is a piece of PVC. Uh, you can buy pre-cut two foot sections or however long they may have them pre-cut. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive that way. I bought an eight foot section of PVC for like $1.50. Um, so that's basically all you're going to need. I actually had like an extra three feet left over, quite a bit. So uh, you're gonna need some PVC, whether it's pre-cut or not. Uh, if you don't have any tools to cut it, like a saw, razor blade, uh, the PVC cutting snips, um, you can usually cut the PVC at places like Home Depot. They have tools in the store you can use to cut it or a worker can do it for you. Uh, but you just need to know how long things need to be. The next piece you'll need is a cap that has a threaded piece on it. And I will put the link in the description for all these parts if I can find them on Home Depot's website. Well, you need four of these. They're not necessary to have, but uh, they do help. So you don't need to buy these, but it's just beneficial. These are Y joints, I believe, and uh, you're going to need four of these as well. All three ends are hollow, um, but one of them has threaded inserts, and that's where these come into play. Um, so if you're not gonna buy the threaded inserts, you can get a Y joint that doesn't have a threaded insert, so it's all up to you. You're going to need some T joints, and mine's already put together because I already built this before, and it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to for the video, so I'm re-recording it so it makes more sense for you guys. These are T joints, and the outsides here are three quarter inch, and the inside here is half inch. And then uh, you'll need this plate, uh, you can use literally any plate you want. This one was only a couple of dollars, maybe even if that, maybe even like 68 cents, I think. Um, but it's just a cheese looking plate. Uh, there's some holes in it and uh, it doesn't need to have holes in it. You can make your own with a drill uh, if it's just a flat piece. Uh, or you could use a really thin piece of wood or plastic or cardboard, literally anything that's pretty sturdy. So just see what you got laying around. And then we're gonna need a bolt. This bolt is for your tripod head. So you're gonna need one that fits the tripod. I believe this is 3 8 16 thread. So that's what's gonna fit in the bottom of your tripod head uh, if you have one, or if you are screwing straight into your camera, you're gonna need to, I believe, get half inch 16 or half inch 20 thread. Yeah, so that's what you're gonna need. I got two bolts to go with it as well, and you'll see why in a little bit. Um, depends on the length you get for the bolt, and that's why. And then lastly, just two common screws that can drill into the PVC. Um, most likely a coarser thread would be better uh, just because we're not pre-threading a hole and we're kind of just drilling straight in. Now that we have everything that we need, uh, let's start get into how to make it. All right, so first things first, I'm the realist. First things first, I'm the realist. realist. This is where you're probably going to have an eight foot section or pre-cut section. And this is where you get to make decisions. I made mine roughly two feet long uh, and I added like a couple inches on each end and that is because when you put the Y joint on, you'll lose about an inch for it to go inside the Y joint. So uh, I did about two feet, two inches. You can pick any length you want for this. However, just keep in mind it is PVC. It does bend at longer lengths, um, but if you do go any longer, you're probably gonna have to make your own modifications so that the slider still works. Pick your length. I picked two feet, so then I cut two two foot sections out of my PVC, and that's the first step. Let's get into the next step, number two. Uh, number two is to figure out how wide you want it to be, uh, which really for me depended on the width of my plate here. You cut two of them out, roughly the same length. You're going to place one end in one, one end in the other, keeping in mind the threaded inserts if you did buy those, that they're facing downwards. And then you do the same thing on the other side. Now you have two pieces that look like this. The next step, number three, you're going to take your two, two foot or however long sections that you cut for your PVC, and you're just going to 
lightly insert them in here. This is just kind of a test fit. So this is the base of our slider. Step number four, if you bought the threaded inserts and the threaded feet, which is now what I'm calling them, our feet, you're going to take them and you're going to screw them in to the bottom. Now you may be wondering why that's necessary. Since you're making this out of PVC, uh, this does have the ability to twist, as you can see, and then it comes out. So the nice thing about these threaded feet is that you can loosen them and tighten them to be different lengths so that it's very level. And that would ensure that this is flat and not twisted. And the cool thing about the feet is uh, there are holes on the bottom here where you can stick another piece of PVC. So you essentially could use your leftover PVC and make little legs for them so that it sits up higher or lower, or you could make it tilt. You know, you could, you could do different things with it. And uh, that's kind of the benefit of having these feet on the bottom. But like I said, not necessary. Let's get into the next step. I took these two T-joints, hot glued them to the bottom of this plate, and uh, that's it. If you wanna add extra support, you could add a piece here. You don't have to add that center piece because we hot glued the crap out of it. So there's one more step we need to do to this to take your drill bit and your three quarter length screws that I have here and screw them into this bottom piece here. Don't, don't screw them into this big piece because then it'll get in the way. You're gonna put them into the T joint here. And since my cheese plate didn't have a hole in the exact spot that I needed it, I had to drill my own. So I just found the spot where I needed drilled it in there and then I just took my screws and I just screwed them in there. You can use your drill and all this does is it ensures that our plate doesn't separate from our PVC so that our PVC doesn't twist or bend or whatnot. So it's just kind of an extra safety measure. Uh, if you feel comfortable with just having the hot glue then so be it. As you notice I do have extra uh, holes right here and that is where I originally put my screws. Now if you put them too close to the center your base plate will not fit because these screws stick up. So just keep in mind to put them far enough away to where your base plate will still fit without hitting the screw. Basically, now we have everything we need. Uh, this is our base plate section slider thing. Um, then we have our slider base, I'll call it. And uh, what we're gonna do is just slide this guy on by taking one end off and then we'll go from there. Once you have your plate on, just give it a good squeeze on every angle to make sure that PVC is in there. Uh, I don't like mine to be glued in just because it's nice to be able to take apart and put back together. It's pretty simple to put together. Um, so now we just kind of have a nice little sliding block here. As you can see, it does slide pretty nice. Next, we have our screw for our base plate, which is going to go through the bottom here. But as you can see, it goes way too far. Uh, it's really, really tall. So that's why I have two of these nuts here. We put one on here to a pretty de decent length. Uh, this way we can just put it through the bottom and it only sticks up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is put my base plate on first and then I'm going to tighten the screw on the bottom so that it tightens up to the bottom of the base plate to squeeze them together. What you can do is use the other nut here and when you get the top nut to where it needs to be, you take the bottom one and you squeeze it up against the top one and that's going to make it nice and snug to where it's not going to loosen. Now we have a base plate on and it slides back and forth and you can even turn it, twist it, whatnot, whatever you need to do. It's a little wobbly, which is an issue. So we're gonna fix that with some string. It's gonna take some string, twine, whatever you have laying around. You don't even have to buy it. Uh, you can take the slider head off of the base so that it's easier. So we're going to take a random length piece of string. I did pretty long. Go through one side here, go in the other side and now you have string. So I'm gonna put this back on, connect the end, and now you have random string. So this does two things. One, it tightens up the gap a little bit so it doesn't wobble as much. And two, it'll give you a nice and steady pull on your slider so you can have nice and smooth movement. I recommend using the string because it's not as smooth without it. Using just your hand is really not the best. All right, so as you can see, it does work. It's not the most amazing slider ever, but for $10, it could suit your needs for any YouTube video and such that you may be making. I would highly not recommend using this for any client purposes or commercial wedding, etc. However, this is kind of just a fun thing you could use on the side for anything at home. Say you're doing a product review on YouTube or some type of thing you wanted to show, uh, you could use this slider to get some pretty unique shots instead of trying to do it handheld or other ways. So 
Uh, it, it gives you the option to be able to use the head from a tripod so you can get more versatile shots, uh, different angles and such, rather than just setting your camera on like a towel and using that as a slider because that's just not as fun. Under $10, um, not including the head obviously, but hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you do, feel free to hit that thumbs up button if you wanna see more videos like this because there are more coming out because I'm going to make a series about camera equipment. You know, the engineering side of me is popping out and then we'll see what we can do from there. And eventually we'll be able to make film equipment that you can use on wedding or commercial shoots that doesn't look super jank like a piece of PVC built one. So please hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more like this because I love doing this type of stuff and uh, I'll see you on the next one.